Howdy, welcome back to the shop. This evening we're going to get started on this little project. Well, I say started. I've already worked on it a little bit. I got this generator give to me. As I was saying, I had this generator give to me a little here a while back. This is an Onan. Oh, uh, 7.5 JB and then some change. So this is a 12 lead alternator, 1800 RPM, four pole machine. Uh, I have reconfigured it to be a single phase machine. That's the great thing about a 12 lead alternator is just switch the leads around. You can do three phase high, three phase low. Uh, you can do delta, you can do Y. You can do single phase high. You can even do single phase 120 volt out of this. Uh, so anyway, it is 5kW in single phase, so I've got, I've, I've rebuilt the, or built a box for it with a breaker. I do not like having a machine, having a generator without an overload protection device on the generator. Uh, honestly, a 30, a 30 amp breaker is a little high, uh, but there ain't no such thing as a two pole 25 amp breaker. So 30 it is. Uh, this machine is all mechanical. Uh, it's got points ignition. It's got relays. It's got all kinds of mechanical goodness on it. And the problem is the governor is really screwy. Just like every other governor in the country, uh, especially in the blue states, this governor is wackadoodle. It does not hold steady. It'll run... If you set it to 62, 63 hertz no load and put a load on it, it'll drop it down to 58, maybe 55 hertz. So there's almost a 10 hertz frequency swing between full load and no load. Uh, regardless of how sensitive I set the governor, how much I twist and adjust on things, it just ain't going to do it. So what I'm going to do is put a... Chinese knockoff of a Governors of America controller on there. Now this comes in a kit. <clears throat> oh, come on, pop. As I was saying, this comes in a kit. So you've got your stepper or your actuator. Uh, Mike at, uh, what's it name? Um, Small engine mechanic recently used one of these, uh, and he'll do a really good job of explaining. I'll try to put a floopy doopy, you know, one of them bloop, bloop, to click on that if I can figure out how to do it. Uh, he did an excellent job of explaining how all of this works. Basically, you've got a magnet, an electromagnet inside of here, powered off a of DC voltage. This thing varies the amount of DC voltage that it sends to here and that varies how far the magnet pulls the armature into the magnet. Pretty simple setup. Uh, you've got a mag pickup. This came in the kit. Uh, this is a Cummins style instead of a Generac style so that's 5 8 fine threaded uh, hole that, that that screws into. A Generac is a 3 8 fine, fine threaded. That's no big deal. I've got taps. Uh, and here's the controller unit, which is just exactly, does the exact same thing as the old uh, Barbara Coleman governors. As a matter of fact, this is 100% compatible to the old Barbara Coleman governors that was on John Deere's and Generax and Cats and everything had this governor on it, or this governor uh, module. It also came with some Heim joints. Uh, I mean, that's $20 worth of Heim joints right there, so maybe $30. So anyway, this whole kit was under $200. Bucks. I'm thinking it was $100 and some change, but it was under $200 anyway. Uh, so let's get started. So you can see down here, there's uh, <laughs> this is the fuel pressure regulator off of a Generac. Don't, don't mock me, it works. I had some of them laying on the shelf that had bad fuel cans on them, so, you know, I don't need a fuel can. 
So I just use that for my for my pressure regulator. I mean, I could have went with uh, <clears throat> went with something from uh, you know called carbon turbo and bought one. You can buy a uh, Gerritsen through carbon turbo or through Kohler, either one. They use they both use Gerritsens. Uh, I should say Kohler uses a Gerritsen and Carbon Turbo sells the same thing. Uh, I think they're like $70. I don't want to wrap up a, small, a fortune in this. No sense to not use something I, ain't, I already got. So here's your oil pressure uh, gauge. Here's your oil pressure switch. Eventually this is going to be replaced with electronic controls. Uh, I don't trust the mechanical controls on this. Uh, there is no runaway protection at all. If this thing locks wide open, it's just going to turn into a grenade. And there's also no over frequency, under frequency, over crank. It kind of has that, but not really. This is something that requires attention at all times. And I want to use it for home standby. So I want it to run automatically. That way if I'm on the road, power goes out. My wife don't got to screw with it. So the the stepper for the uh, carburetor here, about the only place I've got to put it is right in here. And these are basically a power open spring close setup. So I'm thinking probably right about here because I want to have a nice straight pull off of the carburetor butterfly and that's wide open that's no that's wide open that's shut off so no yeah wide open is up so that's backwards so we're gonna have to mount this thing like this so that my arm comes off from that side So there's nothing in here to mount this on, so I'm going to have to make a mounting plate. Thankfully, let me get the camera moved. So thankfully down in here there's a machined boss, and that machined boss goes all the way across through here, and I would assume that right there is an oil or a fuel pump. If this thing was to run on gasoline, that would probably be the fuel pump for the gasoline version. And they may have even used this block, this bottom half of the block, to do diesels. I don't know. I know Onan made some liquid-cooled two-cylinder diesels, and the block's look an awful, awful lot like this one. So this may have been on a diesel. That may have been a boss where a injector pump would have went because it's right behind. I mean, your cam has got to be right in here somewhere. So that should be pretty simple. We'll get the uh, bolt hole pattern transferred off of that and uh, make us a, an, a, a mounting plate for there. All right then, off camera, I removed this cover and sure enough, that's for a uh, fuel pump. There's the drive cam right there, the lobe. And I removed that and I cleaned the mud dauber goop out of these four holes here with a quarter inch drill bit. And then I just chased the threads with a 5 16 tap. So that's the holes are clean, good enough to put bolts in. So next I'm going to take some of my favorite carcinogenic cleaner and squirt on here and get the oil off of it. And I'll be right back. Okay, so we got us a piece of paperboard, a uh, bandsaw blade box, and some spray adhesive. This is similar to Super 77, but half the price and works twice as good. 
You can get this stuff at your local HVAC supply house. Um, I buy it by the case, so my price is a little bit better than everybody else's. And I haven't bought any of these since Biodynamics kicked in. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this thing just a light coat of that spray glue. And we're going to let that tack up for just a minute. And then we're going to stick this onto that. And then you'll see why here in just a little bit. Okay, so our piece of cardboard stuck on there. This is also how I make gaskets. Uh, I have an instrument here. This just happens to be a, a handle that I use on my lathe for the chuck. Oh, no, there's the hole. But you take your instrument and you find your hole and then you just take your take her and twist it around. You can also, the cool people have got a ball bearing out of a um, half axle out of the front end of a car and you anneal that and drill it and tap it for a quarter inch hole and stick you a screwdriver handle in it or something and you've got a really neat tool to do this with. Might make one of them one of these days. So anyway, Oh, I know there's a hole there somewhere. It's in there, right about. Oop, it's slipping around. There it is. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to mark this. Just so I don't get psi goggled. And there's our pattern. Ooh, that was loud. There's our pattern for our holes. So here we are. I've got a, a piece of a tube of 12, yellow pine tube of 12. When you're using hole punches, I don't know why, but it works a whole lot better if you hole punch, use end grain for the backup when you're punching the holes. So here's all I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of wiggle around and feel when I'm over the top of that little indention. go easy peasy okie dokie so there's our template for where our holes go there's uh, probably in the next part 
I will take this template and transfer these holes over to a piece of aluminium or some such business and we will go ahead and make an adapter plate that will bolt on that machined boss and probably what I will do is I will cut a big gasket to uh, to cover all of that machined boss and cut it out of thick gasket material and that'll number one seal off this area here and number two that'll space this whole thing out just a hair because there's some sheet metal that will need to pass below this. So catch you all on the next episodes same bat time same bat channel till we meet again y'all drive safe watch for deer <laughs>